Welcome back to part one. No, this is where we kick it off. Sorry, I had to re-record some videos, so now I'm lost about where I'm at. Um, so basically, we're going to be kicking off our series where we are going to be talking about portfolio optimization using Python. So I know I have a relatively large audience who is more finance oriented, and that's kind of one of the reasons they come to the channel. Last few weeks, there hasn't been a lot of finance content, but I will promise you there is more coming. Uh, it's just a lot of the stuff is collecting the data for it, writing the content for it and stuff like that. And a lot of that just kind of takes time. So uh, this is really kind of designed to kind of get us back in the rhythm of having more finance content for the time being. And then additionally, I know I get requested a lot about when I'm gonna be picking up the Python trading robot series again. I want to show you so you can all see it's there, I promise. I am currently adding to it. So I do have certain content that I'm ready to kind of start writing about and getting ready. Uh, the thing is I have to actually go back through the trading robot and rewrite some of the code in order to uh, easily, I guess, develop these strategies in Python. So I, I did want to let you know it is coming. I'm in the process of working on it. So it will be out relatively soon, I'm hoping. And then we can uh, start going through some of that good information. But until then, we do have some finance content, and this is actually a relatively popular con uh, form of content for Python, especially for finance individuals, because a lot of people in finance have to do this, especially if you work in wealth management. This is something you spend a lot of your time doing, which is you're optimizing your portfolio, your portfolio of financial assets for your clients. Well, why do we do this? What's the big deal? Why even spend time optimizing portfolio? Well, that's what we're going to be covering in this series. And then once we have at least a relatively decent understanding of it, we're going to be talking about how we can do this particular process inside of Python. So I guess to kind of kick things off, what is portfolio optimization? And once we know that, we'll go to GitHub and we'll download the repo. But first, what is it? What, what is portfolio optimization? Well, I guess if I could give you a simple term or just a simple definition, basically, the idea behind portfolio optimization is I'm going to build you a portfolio of financial instruments. In most cases, you're going to hear stocks, and that's basically what we're going to be doing here is stocks. But I'm going to basically uh, organize your portfolio in such a way where I'm going to optimize it for some particular constraint. Now, a lot of times you'll find that we talk about this idea of risk adjusted returns. And so the idea behind an optimized portfolio, when, at least in terms of risk adjusted returns, is that I am taking the most amount of risk for the given amount of return. And so at, at least high level, that's how we want to think about it is we want to get the best return for the amount of risk that we are taking. So there's different types of risk out there and there's different types of financial instruments that give you a very big return or very low return, depending on how much risk that comes along with it. And so the idea behind it is I can build a portfolio where I can maximize your return for a given level of risk. And so that's great because all you need to tell me really at the end of the day is, hey, how much risk are you willing to take? And once I know how much risk you're willing to take, I can then build a portfolio where I can say, okay, customer A or client A wants this level of risk and I can guarantee or at least get somewhere around ideally this type of return. I said guaranteed and pretty much nobody in the finance world can guarantee any type of return. But the idea behind it is you're trying to do a service to your, your client, which is you want them to not take unnecessary risk. And so the idea behind it is if they only need an 8% return, I don't want to start taking on all this unnecessary risk where it's like, well, I'm getting an 11% return. Yeah, but you're taking in all this extra risk. It, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And so we can use portfolio optimization to build a portfolio of stocks and say, hey, how much Tesla shares should I be buying? Or how much Apple shares should I be, be buying? So the idea is that I can have a collection of stocks and I can say, well, uh, if you want the best return for your level of risk, well then sell a couple shares of Tesla and then buy a couple shares of Microsoft. That might be the best optimal result. I'm not saying it is, but it's it's this idea that you tune, you tune 
how much you own of any particular asset and you tune it in such a way that you will optimize the amount of risk and the level of return that you get. So it's a lot of just fine tuning and you do that fine tuning either using optimization formulas, so actual like mathematical formulas that help you arrive at what that optimal portfolio looks like, or you can do something called a Monte Carlo simulation, which is you just pick a bunch of random values and you just start running through thousands and thousands of iterations. And you basically say, who gave me the best result that I'm looking for? And you find the best one, you say, there it is. And the idea is that if you've run it so many times, ideally you'd be arriving at what you would think is you know, the average of everything. So uh, that's at least the idea behind portfolio optimization is you fine tune your portfolio where you, you, you basically purchase a certain number of each instrument so that way you have the optimal returns for a given level of risk. And so we're going to be doing that using Python. Now, something that is important to this is we will need price data. And so there's different places you can get price data uh, related to stocks. Yahoo Finance is a popular and free option. A uh, particular example I'm going to be showing in this video is NASDAQ. I'm not going to be writing the code per se, but I will be showing you how you can use it to uh, get the data that you need. And then obviously we've seen if you have accounts at Interactive Brokers, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Alpaca, Alpha Vantage, it's not really an account, but you can get data from there. You can get data from a lot of different places. So I'm not going to necessarily say you have to get it from one place. I will say if you're going to be getting data, you need to probably start with just daily uh, closing prices for your instruments. You really don't need to go intraday. I mean, I've seen it done, but you're not really optimizing portfolios on like a daily basis. I would imagine in most cases, maybe for some individuals, there's an exception, but for most of us, that's not going to be the case. So we're going to be just OK with daily level data. Additionally, I'm assuming that you're probably going to want to use some of this code. So what we're going to jump into next is uh, what is the word is actually uh, downloading the repo and then installing it on your system. So first things first, I'm going to close down these windows. I have so many windows. Oh, blah, 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 blah. too many. And I got to make sure I don't need that one anymore. <sighs> Hold on. There we go. I uh, like I said, I'm re-recording this because I wasn't happy with the first iteration I did with this video, which is always so much fun. OK, so at this point, hopefully you're very familiar with my rep my repos and my GitHub account. If you're new to the channel, first consider subscribing. And then once you've subscribed, make sure you favorite this particular URL because there's a bunch of content here. But if you go to github.com, a read one one nine two, you'll find all my repositories. Now it's not pinned to the overview page, but if you go to repositories and you go down a little bit, you're going to see one called portfolio optimization. This is one of my public repositories, so you can clone it, use it. I don't care. It's free for you to use for all you finance students out there. I have tons of repos that you probably can use, so please clone them. I'm sure you can find some interesting stuff for some of your classes. So once you go on a particular repository, if you go over to the code button, you'll see some options to clone it. You can use SSH, the GitHub CLI, and HTTPS. HTTPS is what you want. And basically, the, the whole idea, you know, if some of you are new to this, uh, when you clone a repo, you're basically just copying it to your system. That's the easiest way to think about it. At least that's how I think about it. And then the next step you want to do is obviously open up Visual Studio Code. Once you have Visual Studio Code open, you would go to your source control pane. This is this little icon over here. So you just go here, click it, and then you want to do clone repository. So you click the clone repository button. It does ask for the URL. Luckily for us, we just copied it. So you would do control V if you're on Windows, and then you do clone from URL. So you can either click it or you can press enter. Now, once you 
clone it, it's going to say, well, great, where do you want this wonderful repository? Um, you can put it anywhere. You, know, you can put it on your desktop, you can put it in your C drive. It doesn't matter. You can put it in your OneDrive. I'm just going to put it on my desktop to make it easier and then I can show it to you. And then from here, would you like to open it? I would like to open it. And once you have it cloned, guess what? You can see all the files. You can't necessarily use all the files yet. You do need to do one extra step, which is you need to install the library locally on your system. So right now you have a copy of it, but you can't per se use this particular repository in any of your other uh, files and scripts. And so most time that's what you're gonna wanna do. You might like certain things about this repo and you might wanna use it in other scripts. That's great, you need to install it first. So if you do control J, that will bring up the terminal and then you need to run the following command, which is pip install hyphen E, that stands for editable mode. So that means you can go into my code, you can modify that code and you will see those modifications across all of your scripts. So this is great because if you want to extend this code and maybe add a couple functions that I don't have, you can do it and then you can use those functions in the scripts that leverage this uh, library or module. And then you do want to make sure you do period. That means the root directory or the root workspace that we're currently in. So you run it. Keep in mind, there are a few different libraries in here. There's SciPy, there is NumPy, Pandas. Some of those are relatively large. So this probably is not going to go as quickly as it just went for me. I already have them installed, but if you don't have any of them installed, it will take a little bit of time to run through it. And you'll see an egg info here. This is just basically a link to this repo. So now in the, uh, what is it, inside of the, the repo itself, you'll be able to see everything and, and stuff like that. And that's basically installing it. So the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import our libraries. Okay, good. Time is good. As long as time is good, I'm happy. So we're gonna import our libraries and then I will probably cut off the video at that point because after that, we're going to be running to actually grabbing the price data and uh, start running through some of the metrics and, and stuff like that. So first things first, we are using a lot of different libraries. The first one is called Pathlib. Pathlib is basically just a standard Python library. So it comes with Python when you install it. It's a standard library that uh, allows us to work with file paths. Now you might be going, you need an entire library to do that. Oh, yes, you do, because file paths are very different depending on the operating system you're on. And sometimes jumping in between operating systems can be a little bit complicated. Pathlib tries to standardize that for us. Additionally, we are gonna be doing a bunch of number crunching. Guess what? NumPy is great at number crunching. So we're gonna be importing uh, NumPy and we're gonna be giving it an alias called MP. So whenever you see the word as, that means I'm giving it an alias name. So I'm importing the module NumPy, but I wanna be able to reference it using only MP. I'm also gonna be working with Pandas a lot. Pandas is great for taking uh, numerical data and putting it into something called a data frame. It's very familiar to those of us who work in Excel. So it's just a tabular format that we can then uh, do data transformation or even data calculations. We can start combining columns. We can start grouping data, pivoting and unpivoting data. Lots of great different things, even combining data. So Pandas is just really great when it comes to uh, working with large amounts of data in a familiar tabular format. Uh, additionally, we are going to be plotting some of our uh, data as well. Some of these metrics, it's a lot easier to kind of interpret them if we can see them in a visual fashion. And so matplotlib will help us tremendously with that. So we're going to be importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt, so as plot. And with that, we can start uh, visually examining some of our output. Now, like I said, a big portion of this series is about the idea of optimization. There are different ways to optimize for problems. I talked about Monte Carlo simulation, which is basically you just run a bunch of different iterations, but there's also mathematical uh, functions we can use. And so there is a library called SciPy. It's short for scientific Python. And inside the SciPy uh, module is a optimize package, which basically allows us to use different mathematical 
optimization functions. A lot of those are a little bit over my head. These are developed by different mathematicians. But what they allow us to do is they allow us to find the optimal results for different calculations using different mathematical functions. So it's a more efficient way of arriving at an optimized result instead of running a bunch of different, different iterations of it. So it's just more optimized. So we're optimizing the optimization, as we can all say it. And again, we're going to be giving that uh, an alias as well. We'll be doing some printing. Guess what? Pretty print just makes things look prettier. And then from here, we are going to be using sklearn to do some pre-processing. So pre-processing is important whenever you're working with data. A lot of the times when you pre-process your data, and pre-processing basically just means like you're standardizing it. So you might uh, try to take it where you divide each value by the average. And, and basically, the idea behind standardizing it or scaling your data is it improves the overall results of your of your operations. And so it doesn't hurt to standardizing. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it every single time, but it usually doesn't hurt to standardize your data. And so you'll see this done with a lot of different machine learning algorithms and stuff like that. A lot of the times they're taking their data, they're standardizing it in order to just get better results. And so again, it doesn't hurt to do it. It doesn't necessarily mean every single time you have to do it, but a lot of the times it's just a good habit to get into. So we're going to be standardizing our data and we're going to be scaling it. So we're going to be using sklearn in order to do that. Additionally, we're going to be using the actual portfolio thing that we've been talking about. This is really at this point just to get some price data. We're going to be showing you how to get the price data using NASDAQ. So it's really kind of cool. Now we do have some data frames that are going to be relatively large. <laughs> and so um, in order to see everything inside of my Jupyter notebook, I need to redefine some display options for pandas. So I'm going to set some display options for pandas. I don't know why I did that, but it did. And we're going to do pandas set option. We're going to say display dot max column width. And we're going to say next is to negative one. So basically show me all of the columns. And then uh, there's this other option we have to set. It's called set option expand frame uh, representation. I think this is also just, again, for making sure we can see all of the oper basically all of the, the Pandas data frame. So this is just helping us see more of the data inside of Pandas. So this is just changing some default options. Again, it should only be for this particular notebook, so don't worry about it. Like, oh, it's going to change everything. No, it's just for this particular notebook. And then I think at this point, I'm going to cut off the video because I'm doing more than enough time. At this point, if you have any general questions about just portfolio optimization, maybe how to think about it or getting set up with the actual code from GitHub, feel free to put those down in the comments below. In our next uh, video, we're going to talk about loading the data and then also talking about if you don't have the data currently, how you can use the PyOp library in order to download the library. I'm sorry, not download the library, download the data. And then we'll start doing some data transformations as well. So that's in the upcoming video. Again, if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing to it. And if you want to stay up to date as I release videos, I have been releasing videos very, very frequently lately. Um, if you want, you can also turn on notifications as well. That way you stay up to date on YouTube as I release new content. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in video number two.